Hello and welcome to Alternate Dimensions Zendikar Rising set review. In this video we're going to ex explore the black cards um, in Zendikar Rising. Um, what, what I will be focusing on is their aspect for 60 card format constructed play, so standard, pioneer, modern. Uh, you can also check out our other videos. Um, I ha so far I've recorded uh, one for the white cards as well as one for the blue cards. Uh, tonight we're going to do black cards, tomorrow we're going to do red, um, and the last day we'll do the rest of the cards. Uh, so green, multicolor, artifact, and lands. <coughs> um, uh, so acquisitions expert. Uh, this one, Rogue, is a <coughs> obviously the four um, different uh, creature types for uh, or subtypes, classes, if you will, of cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard are going to be important for uh, party. Um, this one's effect is um, uh, if you just play it in a rogue stack or when you only have a rogue in play, um, it's basically going to be like a um, um, can't think of the most recent rat that was run in uh, standard. Um, it um, basically lets them reveal a card and discard it. Uh, of course, it's always going to get the worst card in their hand. Um, it can only scale up to see as many as four cards, and it's going to be very difficult to get uh, to to get and or keep party uh, together. So you know the best that you might get is to see their two worst cards in hand. Um, if you're in the market for just uh, repetitive discard or multiple discard effects uh, on a body, then this may be fine for you. Um, I personally um, like our Kite Sail Freebooter. Um, uh, as a better choice as far as discard goes, uh, but also uh, it's a pirate, not a rogue or a cleric warrior wizard. Uh, for my taste, this is probably just going to be a um, a limited card and nothing more. All right, blood beckoning, uh, one black, kicker three. You get to return a creature card to your hand or two if you kicked it. Um, it's a fine value card. Again, unless there is a massively broken kicker deck uh, that wants a ton of kicker effects where this one might be useful. It might see some standard play. My guess is it's probably not. It's going to be relegated to limited only. All right, blood price. Uh, it's a four mana sorcery. Look at the top four cards. Put two of them in your hand and the rest on the bottom of your deck in order. Lose two life. So, this technically lets you dig farther than some uh, some other previous cards. So read to bones uh, was uh, was three mana sorcery. Look at uh, scry two, then draw two cards, then lose two life. Uh, there aren't a <clears throat> there haven't been a ton of effects that let you actually see all four cards. Let you keep the best two and put the others on the bottom of your uh, uh, library and usually those cards are uh, in blue and not black um, that being said four mana sorcery may may not be good enough for constructed play um, certainly it's a fine limited card uh, depending on how fast the format is and if you mind uh, losing a um, little bit of life for this effect, which digging four cards deep and keeping the, the best two is is actually really good. So, all right, this is the 
premier removal spell in this set. Blood Chief's Thirst, one black, um, with a kicker of two and a black. It is a sorcery and an uncommon. Uh, destroy target creature or planeswalker with converted mana cost two or less. If the spell was kicked, destroy, instead destroy target creature or planeswalker. Um, <clears throat> despite the detriment of it being a sorcery, uh, it's cheap enough that it's going to deal with your early game threats, um, as well as give you a play on turn four uh, to if to get rid of a dangerous or later dangerous creature or planeswalker uh, of any converted mana cost. Um, its flexibility is what makes it playable. Uh, standards can see a lot of play out of this card. Uh, but I still suspect that you're going to see some of this uh, this card float back into uh, Pioneer and maybe even see you know, a couple of copies in Modern. Um, as this deals with Planeswalkers of two mana or less, there is a particular Planeswalker. Um, oh, can you... Uh, Brennan 6 um, is uh, annoying, uh, and this being a clean answer to Brennan 6 is actually super good. Um, it also kills Tomagor, Delver, uh, Soul Scar Mage, um, um, Monastery Swift Spear, Goblin Guide. It, it kills a myriad of things. Um, so this is actually one that has some eternal uh, playability as well as being uh, one of the better removal spells in the standard format. Alright, Coveted Prize. Five mana, uh, it's a five mana tutor. Um, the difference here, it, it costs one less for each uh, creature in your party and if you have a full party uh, after you search for it, you can cast it if it had converted mana cost four or less. Or, you can cast any spell from your hand with converted mana cost four or less without paying its mana cost. Um, triggering this consistently is going to be a problem. Um, the tutor effect is fine, but five mana is a lot and even if you get a little bit of a discount it may not be good enough um, we already have grim tutor which is three mana and three life and let you search for search for anything put it in your hand and it's not seeing any any play currently so uh, I expect this to stay in the um, a good card in uh, you know, a good card and limited, a decent card and limited, and uh, nothing more. Uh, Deadly Alliance. Four and a black, instant, destroy target creature or planeswalker, and the spell costs one less for each creature in your party. Uh, again, uh, five mana for a, remo that, a removal spell is probably not what you're looking for. Um, the discounts, you know, you you might have two different creature types potentially uh, on the battlefield unless you're facing off a deck that's literally not messing with your creatures and you can go through unimpeded um, and my thought is limited card moving on uh, demon's disciple three mana for three one human cleric and in this battlefield each player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker so we just had a creature that is rotating from um, Guild of Ravnica. That was a 3-2. Um, that does the same thing. Um, it was playable in some builds at certain times. I think this is also another one that is uh, that is playable in certain shells. Um, now the thing about the one that's ro that's rotating is it did see some early play in the um, 
the sacrifice decks or the snackerfice decks as I like to call them um, so this may not have an immediate home this may be a sideboard card um, but it does have some constructed applications um, you can set it up where um, you can really force the, uh, the opponent to sacrifice the card that you want uh, if played correctly um, so it's probably have some niche play in standard uh, don't know if we're going to see anything beyond that as beyond standard and limited play for this one uh, drain of the last blood chief uh, five mana legendary vampire cleric four four flying uh, so it's ability uh, since the defending player gets to choose a non-legendary creature card in your graveyard and reanimate it they're going to ch always choose the worst one now there are some cards that you can uh, mess around with and only have the one creature in your graveyard which can be very advantageous but that one's a little harder to work with um, so I don't expect this one to see any standard play I don't really see it five mana four four flyer is a little much for some of the older formats except for pioneer and I don't think there's we haven't seen that many delve cards being played in pioneer uh, we've seen a, we've seen a few since both treasure crew since treasure cruise was was legal um, uh, and of course Gurmag Angler, Hooting Mandrels, so there's a few that are floating out there but not a lot so you can sculpt this a little bit uh, but I don't I, I don't really see it being uh, as useful as I'd like if if you got to choose the target yeah but uh, with your opponent getting to choose the target it's not it's not great I'm not excited about this card uh, Drain a silencer. Uh, this is a five and a black for a three-two vampire rogue uh, that uh, shrinks power and toughness uh, equal to the number of creatures in your party. So way too expensive for constructed play. Uh, fine limited card, particular particularly if you are playing multiple creature types and can get a bigger minus X minus X Dreadworm four and a black five four landfall and it's indestructible to any turn <clears throat> playability it's gonna be too expensive for most constructed formats I don't know, you might occasionally see something like this in standard, but it's very slow. Uh, unless you're ramping up into it. And then it really makes blocking difficult. So, uh, we'll put it in niche category and, and leave it there. Expedition Skulker. So... This vampire rogue has death touch while you have another rogue. Um, this looks more like a curve filler and limited. Um, death touch is a great mechanic, um, but there are better two drops, particularly for the uh, blue black rogue stack that you want to be playing. Uh, so th this one's limited only. All right. This might be, um, oh, another one of my favorite um, black cards in the set, Feed the Swarm. Two mana sorcery, destroy target creature or enchantment and opponent controls. You lose life equal to the permanent converted mana cost. So, 
this is the first time that a black card uh, can destroy a target enchantment. There's been a there's been one or two others that destroy an enchantment, but or make a player sacrifice an enchantment or targets a permanent of a certain color. Um, but this is the first one that I think actually targets an enchantment. Um, since artifacts can be destroyed by three colors, white, green, and red, uh, they wanted enchantments to be destroyed by three colors. They already had white and green, so they needed a third color. Both red and blue don't totally make any sense. Um, you can put it in black with a drawback, and this particular drawback is losing life equal to the permanent converted mana cost. So I think it's uh, I think it's flavorful for what they're wanting. Um, again, this is sorcery speed, so it's not it's not um, it's not perfect, uh, but removal, especially for permanents that you normally can't get off the board, uh, makes this a potential sideboard card even in older formats. Um, I wouldn't go back all the way to Legacy, but I could see it falling down as far as Modern, even though it is a Sorcery Speed spell. Ghastly Gloom Hunter. 1-1 one, one Flying Lifelinker for, for 2 mana with a kicker of an additional 3 and a black uh, to make it a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, again, this one is uh, Limited Fodder. And uh, hope he doesn't bite you. Rule draws Merc Muck Lord. Uh, three mana for a 2 3 crocodile. When it dies, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Uh, this is another common effect that we've been seeing in the last uh, three or four years in black. Um, again, this is another one that gives value on its death and fits black well. Uh, limited card. Probably not going to see anything in constructed. All right, this one, this one, you has uh, potential to see uh, constructed play. Hydra Constrictor, uh, two and a black for a zero zero snake that enters the battlefield with uh, two plus one plus one counters, and each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has menace. So, it fits the theme of the. Uh, plus one plus one counter deck that we were talking about um, you can build that in several different colors um, probably the most top end powerful to me is at least white green because of conclave mentor uh, and because of um, the hydra that gets bigger when you put a counter on a non-human um, or non-hydra excuse me so, uh, if there's an Abzan build, I think this also slots in there because uh, passing out Menace also makes it dang dangerous. Being able to play this and give all your creatures Menace. Oh, I don't have enough blockers. Well, I guess I'm dead. Um, menace and Trample, when you get to a certain board states, are, are both just game-breaking. So, even at a common, even if it's slightly understated... Um, is worth a look so if uh, Abzan counters is your game you may be um, it may be enjoying this one uh, this one's straight up limited fodder 4-3 for 4 mana blank warrior vampire um, nothing to see here move along uh, inscription of ruin all right this one is a this one is another one of the inscription cards two in black first sorcery uh, it has kicker of two and two black choose one or if it's kicked choose any number target opponent discards two cards return target creature card with converted mana cost two or less from the graveyard to the battlefield destroy target creature with converted mana cost three or less so three mana for one of those three effects is reasonable um mine rots uh it's three mana discard two. 
um, we've seen three mana destroy target creature with converted mana cost three or less before. Um, the middle one, I'm not sure that. Um, not sure I've seen that specific game text on a three mana spell before, but I have seen reanimation spells in those colors. Um, four and three black for all three of those. Um, you're probably getting a little bit of a discount there. Um, sorcery speed is hurtful uh, with this because of the both the, the removal spell, but. Returning creatures from the graveyard to the battlefield and discarding cards have typically been sorceries, so uh, I can't totally complain about it. Uh, so it's a fine card. Uh, I expect to see a little bit of standard play. Uh, I don't expect it to be uh, uh, broken uh, by any means, but there's certainly a ton of value in that train uh, without any question. Lithoform Blight, one or in a black enchant, uh, aura enchant land, draw a card, um, enchanted land loses all land types and abilities and has tap add a colorless or tap pay one life add one man of any color. So, we have a way to deal with non-basic lands in standard. Uh, they still get the ability to tap for colorless and they still get the ability to pay play for any mana of a color but it's going to cost them one life if they have to use that. Um, so uh, messing with opponents mana is um, always uh, interesting it's um, since it, it draws you a card it seems to be good value now I'm not sure if this is a sideboard card that you bring up for certain matchups where they have a ton of non-basic lands that you want to shut off um, particularly the castles um, the cycling lands where you can take them off um, two of their colors or you can not take them off two of their colors but uh, force them to pay, pay life to access that color um, to me I think it's more of a counter for specific lands like the castles um, Um, but you could do some naughty things to uh, Tron lands in uh, Modern. You lose all land types and abilities. Okay, you tap for colorless, and you could you could tap for a colored man if you want, but you don't have Tron anymore. All right, uh, Malakir Blood Priest, uh, two mana, two one, a Vampire Cleric, uh, ETB. Each opponent loses X life. You gain X life for X number of creatures in your, in your party. Again, this is another one that fits the in your limited deck um, and constructed. You know, you can only ever guarantee um, a one point life loss and gain. Uh, but he, uh, the art is really flipping cool. Um, I wish he had a, wish I did have a place in a deck. Because uh, that that uh, artwork is badass, but uh, <clears throat> probably going to be relegated to limited and the biker. Marauding Blight Priest, three two for three vampire cleric. When you gain life, each opponent loses one life. Okay, so we already have Veto at three mana. Who does this on uh, um, every point? of life gain and not just a total number so if you had an effect that gained three life with if you gain three life off a card uh, then your opponent would only lose one life veto if 
if you did the same thing with Vito, um, they would uh, uh, lose three life, and then they'd lose another three life. Uh, it's like if you gain three life, they would lose three life off of it instead. So um, now you may want uh, multiple effects in uh, an aggro deck of some sort um, that's using Vito to help push the last points of damage through. In that case, you might be in the market for this. Um, uh, other than uh, other than standard, you might see this in Commander with uh, a few more of the vampires that do multiple triggers of this, uh, since it does each opponent. Uh, but um, not going to push it uh, into any other formats, I don't believe. All right, Mind Carver. Uh, one black equipment, uh, ETB is attached to a creature you control. Uh, equip creature gets plus one plus O or plus three plus one instead if an opponent has eight or more cards in the graveyard. Equip two in a black. So this is the rogue piece of equipment. Um, it um, the auto equip is fant again it's fantastic. I like all these equipments because of that. Um, I like that it gives two different bonuses, so it's a, uh, at least uh, you have bonus A otherwise, or bonus B if you if you trigger that. So that's fantastic. Um, uh, may try a few of these in the rogue build. Um, another badass art, by the way. Uh, so even though it doesn't actually trigger off a rogue, the the second ability is uh, definitely one that rogue players uh, recognize. Alright, Mind Drain. Um, three mana, target opponent discards two cards, mills a card, loses one life, you gain one life. Um, a lot of game text for uh, for this. Interesting that it is a Mind Rot plus a single mill card, plus a um, a draining game on a single card at common. Uh, they've started combining a bunch of effects on cards now, uh, which is uh, scary. Uh, this one's going to be relegated to limited, uh, I'm afraid. I don't... Uh, Nothing more to see here. <clears throat> All right, so to quote Marlon Brando is Don Corleone in The Godfather. My boy, what have they done to my boy? Uh, so Nighthawk Scavenger looks like a merger of of. Um, Tarmogoyf, or half a Tarmogoyf, and Vampire Nighthawk. Uh, th three mana Vampire Rogue, Flying Death Touch, Lifelink. It has power one plus the number of card types among cards in your opponent's graveyards with a three toughness. Um, so this is one of those card that's payoff cards if you're playing rogues you're milling your opponent uh, this guy's going to be ginormous based on what your opponent has in his deck uh, even if he just has um, creature land instant and sorcery uh, this thing can be five power now again escape cards are its nemesis so, as I suggested previously in these rogue builds, make sure you are uh, packing uh, targeted graveyard hate. I don't mean nuking the whole graveyard. I'm talking about nuking a sing singular card out of it at a time so that you can remove the escape cards by which it's going to be uh, using its fuel so that you can keep uh, the maximum number of cards in their graveyard for these abilities. Um, the good news is some of these rogues that 
that trigger off of uh, uh, attacking and milling too, or uh, dealing combat damage and milling, uh, playing a rogue and milling. Uh, you're probably going to fill that up again really quick, but you don't want to have to rely on that. You want to make sure that once you get to eight, that they stay at eight or more. Uh, definitely looks like a powerhouse on that deck. Uh, if you can keep uh, Uro and Croxa from returning from the grave. So, um, prepare for that. Nimana Skitter Sneak. Uh, four mana, three, four. Again, another human rogue. And eight or more cards. It gets plus one, plus oh, and mana. So it's a four, 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 four. Um, so I'm, at least in the rogue builds that I'm looking at, I'm trying not to put a ton of cards in here that don't have a mill trigger of some sort to help you advance that as well um, so I relegate this one di directly into limited uh, which is a perfectly fine card it's uh, uh, that ability is uh, amazing and limited 4444 with menace hard to block really makes your opponent uh, think before attacking or make the mistake and attack too many creatures so um, Standard or older formats? Probably not. Namana Sky Dancer. Uh, three mana, two one flash flying when it enters the battlefield, target opponent mills two cards. Alright, so um, this one might be fringe playable. Um, I'd have to look over the number of different rogue options that you have. Uh, there are certain ones that you want absolutely four copies of because of what they do. Um, this one is a little understated even though it has flash and flying uh, and the mill two cards uh, so I don't expect it to see a lot of play but there may be a couple of builds that experiment with playing with this both because it has flash uh, rogue and the mill trigger all right, boys and girls, uh, fasten your seat belts. This is going to be a bumpy ride. No Priest of Oblivion, two mana, two one menace, lifelink. Okay. Uh, Vampire Cleric, kicker three and a black. Enters the battlefield. If it was kicked, return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. Hold on to your horses, folks. Holy cow. So, <clears throat> it's... It has multiple keywords uh, if it enters the battlefield on two, three, etc. You get to six and mana and later, and you get all of that on a body, and then you get another body out of your yard. Uh, so, Zombify is one of the cheaper reanimation spells, or, or one of the deemed cheaper reanimation spells that they want to use today are four mana. Um, most of them these days are five or six mana. Um, in the early days, Zombify was expensive at four mana. Um, but what you get out of this is a body with two relevant um, two two relevant keywords and another body out of your graveyard. No matter the size, no matter the color, nothing. Um, it's also a cleric, uh, and that's, uh, so I can return a veto, I can return, um, I can return anything if I wanted to. Um, So th this one fits an aggressive deck curve as well as recurring specific pieces that may have gotten killed earlier in the game back in, back into play. Or um, you could play it as an early drop, um, trying to set up for a to recur recur a big threat later on in the game.
enjoy this one. This one's going to be fun to use. Oblivion's Hunger, 2 mana instant, target creature gains indestructible, it's one of the turn, draw a card if it had a plus one plus one counter on it. Uh, so, a nice combat trick, again usually they make these for limited formats, um, occasionally they see a little um, constructed play, but typically they have to be fairly strong or or fairly uh, robust to be able to see play. I don't know if this one is. Um, so we're just going to move on from that one. Skion of the Swarm. Um, three and two black for a vampire cleric flying. Uh, when you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on it, and it's a three three. So an evasive flyer that gets bigger when you gain life fits the vampire mold, fits the cleric mold. Um, slightly understated for the mana cost, but it, uh, being flying, it's that's actually uh, for black is actually uh, a good number. Again, don't think it's constructed worthy. Um, I think there are better there are better creatures at five mana. Um, So, uh, but it's, this thing's going to dominate limited games. Holy crap. Alright, this is another weird one. Scourge of the Skyclaves. Two mana for a mythic demon. Uh, when you, uh, with a kicker of four and black, when you cast the spell, if it was kicked, each player loses half their life rounded up. Scourge of the Skyclaves, power and toughness are each equal to 20 minus the highest life total among players. So I can, so four or five and two black uh, to make both players lose half their life. And even if you're both at 20 yet on turn seven, uh, you're both going to be at 10. So that means this power and toughness is a 10-10. Uh, it does not have evasion. Um, neither did Death Shadow. That hadn't stopped it. Um, but... This one's a little harder to trigger because both your life totals have to be low to use it. And so the only the only deck that I can see something like this being experimented with is in Modern in Death Shadow as either a card that that uh, could be brought in in the mirror uh, because the mirror match. You want as many of you want as many big creature effects as you possibly can. Um, you have four death shadows. That's all you've got. Um, everything else is, for the most part, uh, Gurmag Angler uh, does a, a decent impression because you're dumping all the cards in the in the yard. Um, you're in. I see it as a sideboard card in those in those mirrors. Uh, beyond that, I can't think of a specific deck that would want a card like this. Um, but it would be brutal as bringing as having Death Shadows four th or uh, five through eight uh, in a mirror match. All right, Shadow Slinger. Uh, so this is um, this is another rogue card. Um, you give it death touch, and if it deals combat damage, that player mill three cards. Um, I don't necessarily think you want this in the rogues deck. Um, it's <clears throat> uh, you still want enough aggressive creatures that you can win through combat damage uh, over having to mill them to death um, so I don't know again I don't think this one fits in the constructed build of rogues um, it's a fine limited card because mill 3 is dumb in, uh, in a 40 card format Shadow's Verdict 
three and two black sorcery. Exile all creatures and planeswalkers with converted mana cost three or less from the battlefield. And do the same with all graveyards. So here is the one to eat your Croxas and your um, Oros and all the little things that go bump in the night. Um, it exiles them all. It exiles Jace. Um, excuse me. It exiles a lot of stuff. Um, now, anything bigger than that, it's not going to hit. And there are going to be some ramp decks in the format. So, uh, this may be relegated to sideboard use only um, against specific decks but uh, definitely see it as a standard sideboard option going forward um, I could s potentially see it as a p an option for Pioneer as well uh, but I wouldn't go any farther back all right, Skyclave Shade, two mana for three one Shade. Uh, kicker is two and a black. <clears throat> it can't block, and if it was kicked, it enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it, so it can be a five three. It has a landfall trigger. Um, if um, when the landfall triggers, if it's in your graveyard and it's your turn, you may cast it from your graveyard. So this does, uh, this plays well uh, with multiple themes. It plays well with the uh, plus one plus one counters theme. Uh, it plays well um, with the kicker theme, although uh, kicker as a standard ability is um, not great as a direct theme. Uh, and then it's got landfall to get it back constantly. Um, so, um, Scrappy Scrounger was playable at 2 mana, 3 2, can't block, um, pay 2, exile, uh, exile creature card, return to the battlefield. Um, Uh, this one makes it a little more fair since you have to play it uh, from the graveyard. Um, but if you, I mean, even if you just play it from the graveyard, it's two mana. You don't have to do the kicker. Um, so it's going to be an annoying recursive threat that you're going to have to deal with. Um, in standard, I could see some. I can see some internal formats uh, attempting to use this one. Um, you know, lands already, you've got lands already in your deck. You don't have to kick it, so you can always cast it for two mana. Uh, you don't have to exile anything out of your graveyard. It triggers all of your um, um, prized amalgams um, uh, for fun, so. Skyclave Shadow Cat. Um, so this is another of the plus one plus one counter synergy. Um, um, even though it has a blanket ability, it deals with plus one plus one counters. I think the mana cost and the cost of the ability is just too much to see a constructed format play. Um, definitely can be a house in the uh, in limited where you can where you're constantly sacrificing creatures with a plus one plus one counters on it uh, refilling your hand and making this thing big uh, soul shatter three mana instant uh, makes your opponent sacrifice a creature or planeswalk with the high, highest converted mana cost among those that they control um, we've had uh, cards 
similar to this in standard format in the last um, four or so years. Um, the effect isn't. Um, with the effect making them pick the highest converted mana cost, you can always play this. Um, they cast and cast their four, five, six drop, thinking that they're clear, and then you cast this and make them sacrifice it. Um, is a, is a fine play. Uh, there are going to be some board states where this is usually the highest converted mana cost. It has the biggest impact, but it's not always the case. So there are going to be some times where this is n not your best removal spell. Um, uh, that be that being said, I think it's uh, a fine card for standard, uh, and probably pioneer. I probably wouldn't go back further than that because uh, spells get more expensive, and in older formats they're not played. Um, All right, subtle strike. So, uh, while it does, while it's a, a good combat trick and it does pass out a plus one plus one counter, uh, I don't think it's impactful enough for standard play. So, um, um, limited it is. By the way, that artwork freaks me out. Uh, tell Frodo to run from Shelob. Uh, Tabarax, Hope's Demise. Uh, three mana for a 2 2 flyer. Legendary Demon Cleric, rare. Uh, he has lifelink as long as he has five or more plus one plus one counters. When another non token creature you control dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Tabarax. If that creature was a cleric, you may draw a card, and if you do, lose one life. So the Orzhov Cleric deck, uh, again, this is another creature with a with a dies trigger. Um, this one is going to slot in well. Yes, it's fighting with veto in the three mana spot. Uh, it's really going to depend on uh, what your board state is and how things are going. Whether you, which one you want to drop, um, but uh, this being able to refill your hand with a loss of something like. Um, uh, I think it's Midnight Reaper. Uh, the 3-2 that when a creature dies, you like, you lose a life, draw a card. Um, it's, actually, um, it's actually good for this. Because um, not only it can get bigger, it draws your cards. If it was a cleric, well, you're playing a cleric-based deck mostly. Um, and then when it gets big enough, it also gains life link, so you get to gain that life back. Um, yeah, what's not to like? Hope's Demise is correct. Uh, thwart to Grave. Six mana. Sorcery costs one less for each creature in your party. You get to return uh, two target creatures. One of your choice and then up to one target cleric, rogue, warrior, wizard. And they go to the battlefield. Uh, now, again, I was telling you earlier, six mana seems to be the... Um, uh, you, used to um, in the mid to late game or the mid to late history of magic six mana seemed to be uh, what they were aiming for four five and six mana for recursive spells this one gets you two creatures uh, and if you happen to have um, at least one of the creature types in the play drops to five mana if it didn't return two creatures, I don't think I would be interested. Um, but since it can return up to two, or it's going to return one and then up to another one, so you can get two. Um, it has some potential. I don't know what deck or shell it would fit in right now. Um, but it certainly is at the power level of being able to return two different ones uh, to play. I, again, it would depend on what you're, what we're recurring here. Um, so.
so yeah you might want to put this in the back of your memory and uh, if you're looking for recursive uh, threats later um, this one might might go in uh, go in something interesting vanquish the week um, I think this one was originally this was printed a few sets ago I want to say it was uh, Ixalan I uh, might be wrong here uh, it's a fine removal spell for um, limited uh, unless considering we have limited uh, it will eliminate and blood chiefs thirst probably not going to see this one in standard um, but we're older formats all right now we're going to get to the double face cards Agadenum's Agadim's Awakening, uh, X Triple Black, Mythic, Return Target from your graveyard to the battlefield, any number of target creatures that have each have a different converted mana cost, X or less. So we were talking about a six mana, uh, a, a spell that returned um, two creatures to the battlefield for six mana. Uh, if you use the same cost here, you can return a three, a two, and a one. So you're returning three creatures for this. Uh, and of course it scales up from there. Now triple black is not easy. Um, particularly when we do not have a ton of dual lands in this format. Um, so be wary. Um, the uh, the backside, Agadim, the Undercrypt, it, it's basically a bolt land. If you wanted to interplay untapped, you got to bolt yourself. Uh, every color has one of these. Um, this one I could see just a little bit of an effect like maybe one or two of these in uh, Death Shadow. Um, you know, we had the Scourge earlier. Uh, you could pay five mana and return a death shadow and a scourge um, in the in the late game for modern um, that also lets you bolt yourself to get your life down uh, for those guys so um, again worth a look all right next up black bloom rogue two three um, menace uh, for three that has plus three plus zero as long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard uh, so this is one of the rogues that doesn't have a mill effect that I would think about running uh, because it obviously doubles as a land on the other side um, the uncommon uh, the, the non double sided lands um, uncommon and rares enter the battlefield tapped whereas the mythics give you the option and then of course there's one cycle of rares rare lands that are lands on both sides and they enter the play untapped either side but um, this gives you options hey man that'd be great on turn three you can play them as a land and then later on uh, you can play them as a 5-3 with Menace. Alright, next up, Hagra's Mauling. Uh, 4 mana, instant, destroy target creature, cost 1 less, if your opponent controls no basic lands. Uh, that has actually some potential um, to uh, shrink a cost in, uh, in this format. Uh, in the back is uh, the Brood Pit. Ender's tap, tap for black. Um, I think the the major problem is you already have two very good removal spells at lower cost uh, that also deal with planeswalkers in black. Um, the only advent advantage to running this is that it will double as land. I'm not going to say that it won't won't see play because being able to, to do that is again an option um, 
but it's not an all-star for me. Um, there were some cards that destroyed target creature for four mana that were commons in, other, in, in some formats that never saw play, so. All right, Malakir's Rebirth. Uh, so this is another double face card. Um, one black, you get to choose a creature, lose two life, and until the turn ends when it dies, it is the battlefield tapped under your control. So this is basically a protection spell. Whether it dies to combat damage, whether it, um, it di uh, you know, dies to any effect, as long as it's not exiled, it's coming back. Um, now th this is again another card that I could see um, some play for Death Shadow. It's a one mana protection spell that also lets you lose two life, so it can buff your Death Shadow. Uh, it has instant speed, <laughs> which is damn scary. Um, it, it, that also protects it from leaving the battlefield. Uh, it leaves and comes back, but um, so um, normally I wouldn't put a, a trick like this um, in a constructed format, but I. Again, these lose life cards that give you some sort of um, interesting bonus. Uh, you know, we've seen what Death Shadow can do in in modern. Um, I would not be surprised. All right. Pal I always butcher this one. Pelaka, pred uh, predation. So it's a three mana. Uh, discard spell uh, you get to choose a card with converter mana cost 3 or greater to make an opponent discard uh, and then it doubles as a enter the battlefield tap land um, this one's one mana more expensive than most of the discard spells uh, I think the rest was reprinted as well um, so depending on what you are targeting as far as discard goes um, this is certainly a playable standard uh, card in a standard format that's a little slower or you need something against control decks uh, that also happens to double as a land if you need it uh, which is nice Zoff's consumption um, six mana each opponent loses four life and you gain four life uh, yeah, I don't think this one's going to see constructed play unless you're unless you're talking about uh, commander where you can drain a table for 12 and you gain four. All right, that is all of the black cards. So I want to thank you guys for joining me tonight. My name's Brad. I'm the owner of Alternate Dimensions uh, in Tullahoma. Uh, I've owned this, this store for about a year and a half. Um, it was uh, previously known as Geeks MTG. You can find that uh, address on the TCG Player page. Uh, we also have a website, adgaming.net. If you use the promo code at the bottom of the screen, Fifth Dimension, for 5% off of $5 or more. Um, we sell uh, Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, board games, uh, couple different RPG lines as, as well as accessories uh, if you're ever in Tullahoma come on by and uh, look us up don't forget we are your dimension for fun and I'll see you in the next one